This podcast is brought to you by United Way of Cass Clay. United Way of Cass Clay strives to create a vibrant, welcoming community where everyone can thrive. Get involved at unitedwaycassclay.org. You're listening to The Vault, a forum communications podcast covering true crime and general intrigue in the upper Midwest. I'm Trisha Terinskis, reading A Truly Bizarre Fish Story, written by Worthington Globe editor Kari Lucen. If you're looking for this story, you can find it on our websites under the headline Illegal Fishing Ring Resulted in Three Murders in 1940 and Armed Game Wardens in Minnesota. <laughs> Decades ago, Minnesota conservation officers, then known as game wardens, generally didn't carry weapons on duty. But that changed following a single deadly encounter on July 12, 1940. It left three wardens slaughtered and their killer dead in less than a minute. At the time, investigators were in the process of tracking down an illegal bullhead shipping ring that was sending Minnesota bullheads to fish markets in Sioux City and Des Moines, as well as Sioux Falls. Three game wardens went to speak to Brian Baumgartner, operator of a fish market at Waterville, A.M. Holt, a veteran game warden who had been stationed at Worthington for the past four months, D.P. Brady, a Wyndham warden, and Marcus Whips of Kasota. The wardens went to visit Baumgartner after they received reports of sales made to fish dealers whose bullhead operations were seriously curtailed by Conservation Department orders several months ago, prohibiting possession of more than 50 such fish at any one time. The wardens asked Baumgartner for his license and his records. He went into his house adjacent to the fish market and came out with a shotgun. Witnesses Charles Kuhn and H.B. McCart recalled how the encounter went afterward. It's no use getting smart with that thing, Baumgartner, Brady said. I'll show you whether I'll get smart, Baumgartner replied, opening fire on Brady first and then slaying the other two men. Waterville friends of the murderers said he could drop five quail with as many shots, and the unarmed wardens had no chance at all. After firing the three shots, Baumgartner carried the gun to a fence nearby leaned it against the pickets and pulled the trigger, dying instantly. Friends said Baumgartner was well-liked in the community and had shown no violent tendencies. His wife and son were at home when the tragedy occurred. With the characteristic bluntness of the newspapers of the day, the top headline was, Community Honors Slain Game Wardens, with a subhead of Holt, Brady, and Whips, Shot by Mad Fishermen. In the inquiry that followed, investigators tried to see what was behind the shooting and the details of the way the game was being run up to this time. Mant Torreson, special assistant attorney in the conservation department, said his inquiries revealed that the tragedy was the outgrowth of a long local standing bitterness over enforcement of bullhead regulations. An average individual catch of bullheads at the time was about 30 pounds, or 150 fish, but state law said a person couldn't take more than 50 in a day or be in possession of more than 50 bullheads at a time. The move to arm and uniform the wardens began soon after the triple murder and was complete less than a year later. Adolf Melvin Holt, born July 26, 1888, at Preston in Fillmore County, was the son of Otto N. and Johanna Olson Holt. He had operated confectionaries in Leroy and Bagley before he entered the State Forestry Service and transferred to the Game and Fish Division in 1925. He had transferred from Clearwater County to Worthington in March of 1940. He left behind a widow and two adult children, as well as his parents and four siblings. D.P. Brady, who was 50, was the son of Mr. and Mrs. Philip Brady. He had been in the game warden service for 26 years and was buried in Lakeview Cemetery in Wyndham. 
He was unmarried and left behind his parents and seven siblings. Here's what the Globe wrote. D.P. Brady was known as a fearless warden who had been wounded at least once in his work and who had covered his district actively for more than 20 years. He handled the Rock Nobles area where there was no regular warden and was called in frequently on law enforcement cases. Marcus Whips, a native of La Center, left behind a widow, a daughter, two sons, his mother, and four siblings. Unlock more cold cases and crimes from the past at inforum.news slash try. Get your first three months of unlimited access to our entire news network for only 99 cents a month. Visit inforum.news slash try to take advantage of this deal.